Praise God. So glad you tuned back in to a great God. Um, you might want to get your Bibles, a pen, pad, you know, so you can take notes. Um, I have a returning guest, um, Elder David Jenkins, Jr. of the Christian Federation Ministries of Bronx, New York. And he's going to give you a little history about him in case if you weren't on our last show, you weren't able to tune in. Um, Pastor, I'm so glad you came yes. back. I'm glad you yeah. did it for the second time. It's always yeah. a joy to be here. Thank God. Tell, tell my audience a little bit about you so they can get a little background coming up into this day. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the pastor of Christian Federation mm -hmm. Ministries located mm -hmm. uh, in the Bronx, Bronx, New York, on 157th Street and 3rd Avenue. I've been the pastor there for, this will be my going on my 12th year. I believe it's my 12th year. Um, and um, I'm married, the husband of one wife. I um, uh, have two Amen. children and five grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And our congregation is a beautiful congregation, mixed, mm -hmm. multicultural congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that don't know, we have people from just about all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, a pan-African Caribbean congregation. Mm -hmm. We've got people from Trinidad, wow. people from the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. Yeah, We've got people from Ghana mm -hmm. in our church. We have people uh, that are all over the world, African Americans. We've got people from Georgia and mm -hmm. North Carolina <laughs> and South Carolina. So it's a multicultural church. Mm -hmm. We blend the cultures but we do not blend the doctrines. We've okay. got people that come in from different denominations. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, but we have one doctrine, and that's the doctrine mm -hmm. of the Bible. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. One baptism. This God. is what we believe in. We mm -hmm. teach the Word of God. Mm -hmm. We believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. We believe mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is Lord. We believe in the Trinitarian Amen. doctrine. Amen. We believe that God has revealed himself mm -hmm. uh, as one God. Mm -hmm in three divine persons, mm. namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is what we believe. This is what we teach. Mm. Uh, we teach in the, uh, the return of Jesus Christ, Amen. not only for, the, for the, those who are alive in Christ, not mm -hmm. only for the saints, mm -hmm. but he's coming to resurrect those who are not saints mm -hmm. unto eternal Amen. damnation. Amen. So uh, we teach solid scripture. Our young people are very uh, knowledgeable of the word. Mm -hmm. and many of them are preachers. Many of them our uh, deacons, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I think I'm the oldest one in the congregation. <laughs> I think I am. No, there's a couple that's older than uh -huh. me. So, so when do you have your um, church? Well, what times? Uh, yeah. every Sunday, we, we start off with Sunday school, mm -hmm. 11 o'clock worship service. On Wednesday nights, we have uh, prayer. And after prayer, we go into Bible studies. And mm. Friday nights, we have street ministry mm, mm. at 7 o'clock. Oh, okay. And after street ministry, we go up and have more Bible studies. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a Bible uh, church mm. in the sense that we study the Word of God. We apply the Word of God. Mm. We're not just hearers of the okay. Word, but we're doers. We're doers. We, as the pastor, my job mm -hmm. as pastor is to love the sheep, mm -hmm. to tend to the flock, mm -hmm. and to make sure mm -hmm. that the flock is eating sound doctrine, right. that they are studying sound doctrine. And um, we do, in mm -hmm. our church, apply church discipline. A lot of people don't. Oh, now, that's, that's very important. Church discipline? Oh, yes. Church discipline. A lot of churches don't do it. They just let anything go in their pulpit, anything go in their organs. That's right. You no, know. we do not allow that. We do <laughs> not. You have to be, you have to live. Your, what you say, yeah. all right, um, must be in full display, <laughs> all right, to those who are coming and looking forward to you, looking to you as being leadership, mm -hmm. whether it's praise and worship, deacon, minister, mm -hmm. elder, mm -hmm. pastor, mm -hmm. or playing the organ. If you're in a leadership role, you must live a life sure. uh, that is... Um, you know, parallel to what you say. Mm -hmm. uh, if you say you say it's on the inside, it should show on the outside. Amen. And just like I've, I've been to churches where I've seen young pastors preaching, preaching hard. They preach so hard till they step in all on God's chair. Yes. It's a great God's furniture. No. I don't, that, that cannot be of God. He's not going to tell you put your feet in his chair. That's right. 
What's well, something's wrong with that? Well, that's unseemly. You wouldn't put it in anybody else's chair. I'll go to the White House uh -huh. and step in, 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 you know, in the uh, president's office and, mm -hmm. and stand on his desk mm -hmm. and see what they do to you. Mm -hmm. But here is the, the, the king of kings, the lord of lords, <laughs> the king of all kings, uh -huh. the president of all presidents. We come into his house uh -huh. and we desecrate his temple. Oh, my God. No, unheard of. Unheard of. They're so high in the spirit. I said, God, what spirit they got? Because they can't be yours. Because you're not going to desecrate your own your own house. Well, they're uh, they're loose cannons. The Bible said that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Subject to the you prophet. See? So yeah. you can you can you can if you feel that you just lost in the spirit, mm -hmm. so to speak, you can contain that. Yeah. You can contain that. You don't have to get up on the top of the roof and to prove that you're spiritual, you're going to jump off right. the roof and you're going to ask everyone to jump right. behind you. Yeah. No, you can contain that. Yeah. You may believe that you can do that, but yeah. I wouldn't advise it because there's a law uh -huh. that will really come up against you. It's called the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. So you can go up on the roof if you want to, but God has a higher law <laughs> that will violate your, 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 your assumptions. Yeah. <laughs> and I mentioned that to a person. I said, you know, your, pre your preacher, I came to your church, your preacher was fine. I enjoyed the word, but when he started stepping in them chairs, it took yeah. away. Yeah. It took away. And she says, well, I know how you feel about it. Yeah, but you should feel the same way. Well, absolutely right. <laughs> they should feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Honor God's house, honor mm -hmm. God's people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you step in a chair, then you'll step on God's people in various forms and fashions. Right. So you, there must be order, mm -hmm. there must be decorum mm -hmm. in the house of God. Mm -hmm. In our church, we believe mm -hmm. in structure. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not formal mm -hmm. in the sense that you've got to dress a certain but way. you got to do the right thing. But you have to do the right thing. Yeah, you have to yeah. acknowledge that this house has been dedicated and mm -hmm. consecrated as being yes. God's house. Yes. And if it's holy and set aside for worship, mm -hmm. then worship should be there. Mm -hmm. There should not be any unseemly activity right. going on in the house of God. Because the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with, with praise. praise. Nobody's, I mean, not many people are entering into the church like that today. That's right. And they coming in crying about what they done sinned about it, or they cry, but yet they're going to continue to sin. They, they, they crying about, well, this is a traditional thing. You know, my mom had me in church and, and I have to come or, or either I'm bringing my kids up. But they lose the reason for being there. Well, what happens a lot of times, evangelists, is this. Uh, they are ignorant to what God requires. Uh, in the church, in, a, in their Christian conduct, they're ignorant. Jesus Christ always, when he went up against the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees, mm -hmm. he says, you are always following the tradition of your father. That's right. Now, that meant that they got off of Moses mm -hmm. and they started developing new rules and regulations mm -hmm. within uh, the nation of Israel, and right. Jesus rebuked them yeah. for it. Yeah. They were adding laws upon laws that Moses never said anything about. They're doing it now. They're doing it now, and they're following tradition. Mm -hmm. the, the job of the pastor is to watch that. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some things that the pastor has to, have to nip in the bud mm -hmm. before it goes and become a tradition, generational uh, yes. tradition from yes. one generation to another. Right. You know. But uh, if they don't know, but do you know what the word do say too? That he won't have us ignorant. That's right. So we're not reading, and we and a lot of people don't read. Right. They'll read other people, and other people are not actually living. It's like they living to their understanding. That's right. And it may not be. The right understanding. Uh, when the last time you heard anybody say we fasting? That's right. Your church may do it. That's but right. he said these things come not but by fasting right. and praying. And praying. So you right. got to bring this body under subjection. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I that's mean, what the Bible, the fasting does. Well, it goes back to the leader. Mm -hmm. It's the pastor. God. Mm -hmm. If you are a leader, mm -hmm. all right, the Bible talks about how the leaders, you know, in the Old Testament, they fed themselves and did not feed the flock. Yeah. Our job yeah. as pastor is to feed the flock. Mm -hmm. And we feed them the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how shall a man cleanse his Way, but by the word, by of, the God. word of God, not tradition, right? But by the word, the of, word God. of God, you know, and heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall abide forever. Ever. And God does speak to everyone. Uh, 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 he, he beckons the sinner to come to him, 
But the saint, he tells them, he'll, 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 his spirit lets you know when you, he'll give you that condemned spirit when you're doing something wrong. That's right. To pull you right back in, to get you right. And this is what I love about the Lord, because there's hope before the grave. That's and right. that was the thought of the theme of my last show. And this, this one, the theme is, That's there's right. hope before the grave, oh, yes. but it's a matter of obedience. That's right. Obedience from Genesis to, to revelation. revelation. That's, That's true. what the Bible speaks of, oh, the yes. obedience. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't know to be obedient or how to be, you can pray and ask God to give you an obedient spirit. Right. spirit. That's right. Well, the word of God is really, I mean, we, this is the thing. The thing that I've always preached in the church is that we, uh, our, the chief source of authority mm -hmm. in matters of discipline and matters of judgment mm -hmm. in the church mm -hmm. is the word of God. That's right. Anything that we need to know mm -hmm. how to do is in here. Is in the word of God. Oh my God! Every answer to the world. Now mm -hmm. here it is. The world's uh, ills mm -hmm. and their and their and their problems mm -hmm. is the word of God. Amen. God has word has wisdom. Mm -hmm. It has knowledge. Mm -hmm. It has insight mm -hmm. into the soul of men. That's right. Men's souls are lean, mm -hmm. and they're looking for someone to worship. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a solution uh, to their problems, mm -hmm. and we try everything. Uh, other than God's mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. So in our church, we steer people back to the word of God, mm -hmm. not tra the, the traditions of men. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have traditions, mm -hmm. but it does not trump the word oh, of God. God. Amen. And so we focus on mm -hmm. the word. We teach the word. Mm -hmm. We preach the word. We even sing mm -hmm. the word mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. If a song that is being sung by the praise and worship team does not line up with uh, the Word of God, we do not sing that song. Yes. <laughs> because our worship services from, from the very beginning mm -hmm. all the way to the end mm -hmm. is a service of worshiping God mm -hmm. in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. And that truth has to line up with the Word of God. And I hear people say, well, it don't take all that, but it's going to take that and, and much more. more. That's right. Uh-huh. Because, you know, the real deal is who are you going to spend eternity with? That's right. That's the real deal right there. I mean, you can't live and be afraid to live and afraid to die. Something got to give. And a lot of our young people are sitting up in mental institutions because they're afraid to live. That's right. And they're afraid to die. That's right. You know, and, and it's bugging them out. But if they get in the word, because I do ministry with um, my church at um, Creedmoor University. Creedmoor right. Psychiatric um, Hospital. Yes. And if you see the young people that are in there that know some of the Word of God, I didn't say no God now, but know the Word of God. Yes. That they can they can quote them them scriptures, but they can't live it. Right. It makes your heart want to cry. Yes. Because they're young, mm. young. And there was one lady in there. I mean, she wrote poetry. She was in, um, uh, what is it, Apostle Washington? Was the Apostle? Yes. Yeah, Washington's church years ago before, yes, he, before passed. he passed away. Uh-huh. But she can't live it because of a man. Right. And this is sad because if she knew the real man, right. That's she right. wouldn't even be there. That's right, right. And her poetry, would, you don't know where it would have went. That's right. But God has you there for a reason. Amen. He has you there as an intermediary, as an intercessor for mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. uh, that knows the word of God, mm -hmm. but somewhere along the line she got lost. Right. And God has placed you there uh, to restore the mm -hmm. soul of an individual like that. Mm -hmm. um, she's in a psychiatric facility right. and they're treating her with all types of medication mm -hmm. and uh, psychological mm -hmm. um, remedies. Right. But the only remedy for her is the word is of God. Is the word of God. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I feel God had a search warrant out for her. That's right. And, and, and he took her off the street so that she may live. That's right. You know, give a chance to get herself together. Right. Because I myself had a problem at one time. Right. But 
he turned it around. There you go. You know, I wasn't supposed to be no good but to have children and get married. Right. Uh, but I worked 26 years for the housing authority. Gra uh, got promoted from a uh, receptionist up to a, a housing assistant. Wow. You know, and um, not just that, the Lord taught me how to raise my children. That's right. You know, my son was on crack, my, but God delivered him. Wow. He's, uh, he has his a uh, co-op now, and he has two beautiful children. One just graduated out of college, and the baby girl is 10. Right. But if I had not stuck with him, you know, if I had continued to be an enabler, right. allowing him to come in and, and, and change his clothes and eat, and yet he's taking everything out when he leaves, then he wouldn't be where he is today. That's right. Now he can appreciate it, but when he came back to say, oh, I'm ready to go, he was angry with me. Right. But God is a true God, and, and, and I use the word of God to raise my children. Right, right. So it took that for him, and he's working for housing authority for 15 years. Yes. Now they say, society say once on crack, always on crack. But he was on crack bad. Right. Three years before I found out. Oh, yes. But he's a, a maintenance man today, took a test. He okay. went to heat plant technician, and he backed the maintenance man as a promotion. Wow. So, you know, God, he, he's, he's true to his word. That's right. And just like the potter, like I said in my theme, there's hope before the grave. That's right. Because he was dying. That's right. He was sitting out there with pneumonia, coughing. Right. That's right. But I said, son, I didn't choose that life. That's right. This is the life you chose. And I don't feel that I want to be subjected to it. That's right. So you go on out there and live your life. That's but right. But when you want help and you're ready to get your heart together, knock on my door. I got a place for you. That's right. And that's what he did. He stood out there all night coughing. Mm. He knocked on the door in the morning and he says, I'm ready. Push wow. past and everything. We drove through two toes. Because mm. Soul Saver Station had a drug program that... You can go to uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. You can go to Haiti. If you can't make it in New York, you can go anywhere that they have the program. Now, my husband was there, too, because right. he was on it. Right. He got him off of it. Wow. But Carl, my junior, right. by him being younger, I had to do this. Right. That's tough love. That's tough love. And right. it shows you that the potter, God was molding him, Amen. molding him. Yes. When he came home from the program, I was standing by the door, and I heard him on the phone say, man, it don't even talk to me no more. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. Big Crack talks to you. I wow. spoke to a, a few, you know, people like that, that on that dependency, and they say, you don't know, it talks to you. Wow. It pulls you. Mm. It tells you what to do. Right. It tells you it's time to... Uh, a paint your house windows black. It's a demon, and it talks to them. Wow. And because um, I was saying, you know, uh, then it passed now, but I said, what is it that you would sell your mother to get this thing? And, and it's only a little bit, but you will sell your mother for yes. it. He said, you don't know, and it tells me to beam up Scotty. Wow. So I said, God, I'm reaching out for all your children. Look at mine. Yes. The preacher just got back to preaching. That's the one who had the stroke. She she just been ordained as a minister. When she preached, you can't even hear how she's talking. Right. Um, my other daughter, which is the one that sang, used to be a little mean thing, but God is calming it, and she's singing. Wow. You know, my son, he's the one I'm waiting for. He feels he can pray in the morning. <laughs> he can pray in the morning with his family, and, and that's that. Right. But I didn't raise him like that. Yes. And so he has to know that there's something in him that he's going to have to come around. And I believe God is going to turn him around. Mm. He done spit him three times. Now, this last one, he's still hurting. Right. So he's going to come around. It's just some people that take heart. He's like his father. And then the baby, well, the baby, the middle girl, she can pray. Wow. Not where I want her, mm. but she can pray. It's where God is dealing with her. So the potter. 18 and 8, where it says, if that, that, if that a nation against whom I have pronounced turn from the evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And this is what I believe called in. Right. He, he had to. Right, right. He had to. I brought him up. 
the way I brought them up was they had to give me a Bible scripture in the mornings and we talked about it or we had church in the house mm -hmm. or they made their bed after they gave me the Bible scripture, they ate, made, they made their bed, came in, they ate, gave me the Bible scripture and then they went to school. But it wasn't just like that. Right. I had to make that scripture real to them. That's right. And, and so I would say, now, watch your friends. Right. You know, the Bible says this, but watch your friends. Because they like to give information, but they're not giving you information from the word of God. That's right. So that's why misery likes company. That's right. And they're going to try and pull you out if you're a good kid. And you're going to mess up your life. And then you're going to be in this hopeless thing feeling, God right. don't want me. That's right. And that, I mean, what you're saying is absolutely right. What you did was gave them hope. Mm -hmm. And the hope is the assurance that there is a better way outside of your condition. Yes. And the hope that they could uh, escape their condition mm -hmm. is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when it came to Israel and the Potter mm -hmm. uh, uh, house, mm -hmm. uh, there was hope. Yeah. And he said, yes, I can do it. Not you. You mm -hmm. can't do this. You can't escape crack. You can't escape uh, your, your lostness. Mm -hmm. Nor can you escape your sinfulness. Right. But I can do this. Amen. All right. And so by you giving them the word of God, mm -hmm. all right, and placing it in their heart at right. a young age yeah. and in the duration of their lives, mm -hmm. it gave them hope, mm -hmm. that hope became their, uh, their assurance right. that one day mm -hmm. God will take that situation mm -hmm. and turn it around. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does it with us. Yeah. You know, even as, you know, a pastor, sometimes times get very difficult I'm and it looks it. like, you mm -hmm. know, that, you know, things are not going to work out. Mm -hmm. Paul says it in the first chapter of Second Corinthians. Mm -hmm. uh, we were afraid, we were frightened, we became despaired mm -hmm. even unto death. Even unto death. But you know what? He never lost hope in Christ. You remember Job? Mm -hmm. Job went through the very same thing. Uh, yeah. He said, though he slay me, Come on. yet I will trust, trust him. him. That's Why? Right. Because in the earlier part of God's, of, of Job's life, mm -hmm. all right, he was, the Bible says, he's a man that is perfect in all his upright, ways. He's yeah. upright. Mm -hmm. I mean, he made sacrifices. Like mm -hmm. Right. And there was none like him mm -hmm. in the land. Mm -hmm. So that when his time came, mm -hmm. hard times came, mm -hmm. the hope of his Savior, uh -huh. knowing that, you know, that I will see my Redeemer, uh -huh. and I know he'll stand <laughs> on the uh, on the earth, mm -hmm. and when I see him, I see him with my own oh. eyes. Amen. I will Hallelujah. see him for myself. Yes. In my flesh, yes. I will see him. Ooh, he had that assurance. Mm -hmm. He had that hope mm -hmm. that even though he was on the, the mm -hmm. heap, on the garbage mm -hmm. uh, dump, mm -hmm. Uh, lost everything, mm -hmm. lost his servants, he lost his family, mm -hmm. his wife, you know, talked like the foolish women, mm -hmm. uh, and, and his friends were no help to him, and he was sick with boils and all types of sickness, yet saw he boils. never saw boils. saw boils, he never lost mm -hmm. his hope and his assurance that God was going to appear to him mm -hmm. and give him the reason for why he was going through what he was going and through. And I love this scripture where he said, all my appointed time." That's right. All his time. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. He will not sin against God. That's right. Yeah. And it's a matter of obedience. It's a matter of obedience. A matter that's of obedience, right. as I said. And this is a matter of obedience today. Talk to my congregation. Tell them how important it is to be obedient unto the God. Unto God. If God, if God has spoken mm -hmm. to any of you, mm -hmm. Uh, through his word and uh, you know as I always say if you're watching this program obviously God has spoken to you mm -hmm. and it's not by chance that you tuned into this telecast and this broadcast it's not by chance uh, that you're listening to this conversation or this uh, these scriptures it's not by chance God mm -hmm. you know this is proof uh, that God is dealing with you mm -hmm. this is the proof if you understand anything that has been said on this broadcast this is proof that God has illuminated your mind. Amen. What God is asking you to do is to be obedient to what you heard. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are unchurched, meaning that you don't have a church home where there's a pastor, why don't you go out and find a church? 
God is calling you. God mm -hmm. is appealing to your intellect. God wants to change your situation. Amen. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless how lost you feel, mm -hmm. uh, you're not that lost where God cannot, Come on. cannot save you. Mm -hmm. and you're, not, you're not in that much sin mm -hmm. where God cannot stoop down, Come on. Come on. bring you out of the muck and mire, mm -hmm. and save you completely, mm -hmm. save you to the uttermost. Amen. Salvation is not your work. Mm -hmm. It's the work of God. Oh, God. And if he has you listening to this telecast and you understand your word, mm -hmm. this word, mm -hmm. then perhaps, I want you to consider this, perhaps mm -hmm. you have been chosen by God Come on. to be taken from being a mm -hmm. marred vessel, mm -hmm. a, a vessel of dishonor, mm -hmm. so that he can mold you mm -hmm. into a vessel mm -hmm. of honor. Mm -hmm. Find a church home. Mm -hmm. Open up your Bible, mm -hmm. read the Word of God, find a man or woman of God mm -hmm. that knows the Word of God mm -hmm. so that they can explain to you more perfectly what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Praise God. It's a matter of obedience. That's right. It's a, Just matter, a matter of obedience. obedience. That's right. I mean, if you can't ask God for if you can't be obedient. That's right. Ask God for the spirit of That's obedience because right. it's a spirit. That's right. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. You know, we take on many spirits, and we got to ask God for the right spirit. That's right. It's a matter of obedience. It's a matter of obedience. That's right. And it's I, better to obey. Yes. All right. Than to sacrifice. Than to sacrifice. Come on now. And, and, and we're right. It is better to obey. And I'd like to say to you today, it is better to obey than sacrifice. God is not looking for you to to to. Beg and beg for money. He's looking for your heart. That's right. And your heart is what moves God. And if you're not really sure what heart he's talking about, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. It's the mind. That's right. Your mindset, oh. you know, that he's looking at. And he wants you to know that he's able to yet keep you and teach you if you allow yourself to be teachable. Amen. Hey, praise God. That's right. Uh, he, he wants you to know that the word is right. Hallelujah. And if you want to be real mm. in your spirit and be who you are mm. and not be what somebody else wants you to be, get in the word, That's praise it. God, because then you can walk up right just like Job, praise God. You can walk up right just like David, praise God. You can walk up right, yes. hallelujah, and Go know ahead. that God is able That's to it. keep what he Men. Hallelujah. He's able to keep you in the midst of trials yes. and tribulations. He's able to keep that mind yes. when the enemy wants to make you depressed. He's able to turn that depression yes. around to joy and gladness. If you just obey, praise God. He's letting you know that there is no sin. That's right. Hallelujah. That's outside it. the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost that cannot be corrected. That's right. God is able to. Because he's looking for a man that's standing in the gap. Amen. Looking for a woman that'll stand in the gap. That's right. That'll pass the word. Hallelujah. Yes. And let dying men know that he's able and alive to raise you up and make you, hallelujah, a good steward yes. unto him. That you'll be able to feast on the word of God and be hungry for the word yes. and not so much for the natural hunger for right. it. Because these things come not but by fasting yeah, and, praying. and praying. So we have to know that we are able, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only through God. Yes. Because he reaching out to the saints today. That's he's it. reaching out to the church today. That's it. Hallelujah. He's not just reaching out to the sinner man. He's reaching out to us to get yes. us together. Yes. For judgment will reign in the house of God first. That's it. That's it, it must come that way. That's it. So just know that God is. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's it. That means you got to get that word and, and as you're reading, ask God to open the eyes of your That's understanding right. Right. so that you'll understand what he's teaching you. Just like Jeremiah with the potter. When he told Jeremiah and the to go down to the potter's house. That's right. He may tell you to go down to the potter's house to show you that he can take the marred portion of your clay. Yes. Praise God. And make it anew. Yes. And he's telling you, don't worry about the clay drying too fast. Because yes. the, the clay got to dry. Yes. But in the midst of him molding you. Yes. And it, it's getting into his perfection state. Yes. He wants you to just be Hallelujah, working for him. Yes, yes. Learning more about him. Yes. Teaching him about him. Teaching others about him. Knowing that he is. Praising him. Yes. Lifting him up. Yes. Oh, know that God is good. And when I think of the goodness of, of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Oh, glory. And all, all that, that he's, he's done, done for me. Us. Hallelujah. Amen. My, My soul, soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's not Thank just God. a saying. He came to give you life. I can't 
you put fire to your bosom and not burn. That's well, right. the Holy Ghost is like fire. Yes, Shut sir. up in, in your, your bones. bones. Praise That's God. Right. Amen. If you're in church and you find yourself in a church that's dead, run, run for, your, for life. your life. That's it. Because if this is your life. That's right. May God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Continue to reach. God is good. God Amen. bless you. God bless you.